I recently moved into a new apartment and I have a goal. I want everything in this place to be built by me. Shelves, cabinets, TV stands, benches, what have you. I want to make it all, film the videos and upload them to this channel. Surprise. I think that'd be super cool to be able to invite people in and be all like, you like it? I built it all. <laughs> As I trust you can already see, I do already have a few pieces of furniture like this. $13 Goodwill couch. I mean, it's a good couch. I built that table. <laughs> but all the furniture I already have, which isn't much, I plan to eventually replace with furniture I've built myself. I'll admit it's a very lofty goal, but I think we can do it. So let's get started. Episode 1, The TV Stand. Here I am on the floor because I haven't built a workbench or even a table yet. Maybe that should have been video 1. Anywho, here's a chicken scratch. I paid a chicken $5 to scratch, and this is what I want my TV stand to look like. I really can't tell you much about my thought process behind designing this other than the fact that I wanted something unique that no one else had that was also super fun and cool to look at. And I think this kind of checks all the boxes. So to get started, I went down to Le Home de Pa and got two nice sheets of pine plywood. They sell these for about 30 bucks each, and they are real nice. I then began to cut these with the grain into 17 inch wide strips because that will be the main depth of our cabinet. Now I will not be going over the exact measurements and dimensions at least verbally in this video because that would be super confusing not to mention boring and it would be almost impossible to follow but instead I will provide you with this blueprint slash graphic. So feel free to pause the video, reflect back on this or just screenshot these as needed. So after I felt that I had enough 17 inch wide strips cut out, I began to measure and cut them down to the proper length that I needed them to be. But once I finished that, this is where things really began to get hard. We're going to want to take a router and start cutting out 3 quarter inch wide, 1 quarter inch deep channels for the shelves to slide into. This is particularly challenging for a few different reasons. First off, you want to make sure you mark the channels to be cut in the right area so that they match up with the shelf either above or beneath them. And secondly, since my router has a built-in plate on it that sticks out like two and a quarter or some odd inches from the actual bit itself, I had to throw that into the calculation as well. But hallelujah, I only had one miscut. It was three quarters inches off because I forgot to calculate for the width of the actual bit, which is kind of funny. But luckily, it was pretty easy to fix. But anyway, once that mess is behind us and we have most of our channels cut, we can finally begin putting everything together, which is a blast. For this, as you see, I just used copious amounts of wood glue, a Bradley nailer, and a speed square, and just went to town putting everything together. Now after I had the core unit assembled and put together, I went ahead back with the router and finished cutting out the rest of the channels. There's really no reason why I couldn't have cut these channels out when I cut out the other ones, except it was just easier for me to keep everything straight in my head this way and it really helped me minimize mistakes. Now if you remember the picture, both ends of these cabinets are supposed to be angled and those pieces of course have to be cut at an angle. And so the easiest way to find out where to cut those is to just simply put the board on top of where they need to sit, mark them, and cut them. Don't worry about measuring it out or anything like that. Just for those two pieces, just mark them and cut them. Save so much time and it's so much easier. And for that reason, you will not find a measurement in the blueprints I provided for those two pieces. Now after we finish putting all that together, as you see, the main core of our cabinet is pretty much done. However, I don't like being able to see the plywood on the front of the cabinet, so I'm going to go ahead and put a face on it. To do this, I just took a really nice 3 quarters inch thick pine board and cut it into inch wide strips. I then cut those strips to match the front of the cabinet and glued and nailed them in place. This is by no means difficult to do, however it is somewhat time consuming because you want to make sure you cut everything at the perfect length and at the perfect angle so they all match up right. Because after all this is the face of your cabinet and it's going to be the first thing everyone sees. And with that now, our main cabinet is put together, the face is on it and everything's looking good except there are a whole bunch of little nail holes all over the cabinet. So I'm going to take some wood filler and very carefully go all over the cabinet making sure I fill in every last little tiny nail hole that we left behind. 
Once I'm confident I've filled all the nail holes and I've given the putty more than enough time to dry, I'm going to grab my power sander and just go to town sanding. Because really, this is going to be the last opportunity we have to sand anything before we put on the back. Once we're satisfied with how well we've sanded it, it is time to put on the back of the cabinet. For the backing, I'm just using a thin sheet of plywood. I think it's like an eighth of an inch or something. And I'm going to start by cutting it down to a slightly oversized rectangle that's about an inch or two too big for the back of the cabinet. I'm going to take that sheet of plywood we just cut, lay it on the ground, and then lay the cabinet on top of that facing down. And finally, I'll take a pencil and just trace along all of the inside and outside edges of the cabinet onto the plywood. Okay, cool. Uh, so now, why the heck did we just do that? <laughs> well, we did it so we can now know where the shelves are at even after the back is on. And therefore, subsequently, we'll also know where we can put the nails and where not to. To guarantee this works, all you have to do is make sure that your backing and your cabinet itself are lined up perfectly. The easiest way I find to do this is to make sure at least one of the edges of both your plywood and your cabinet are completely flush, as you see I did here with the bottom. Then we just take our router again, only this time with a flush trim bit and just trace around the edges. I hope I'm not the only one that just found that immensely satisfying. I like it, doesn't look too bad, but would definitely look better with some stain. So let's stain it. I want this stain to be three different colors. I want the outside to be brown, the inside to be black, and the face of it to be gray. And so I'm using electrical tape to tape off the transitions. And surprisingly, electrical tape actually works really well for this. Don't worry, a little bit of light sanding, sure it'll come right out. Unfortunately, I forgot to film me staining the front and gray, so here's a reenactment instead. Wow, I really like that. I'm not gonna lie. In my head, I wasn't sure if all the colors were gonna work out, but I think it's pretty decent. Crap. I just realized I forgot to cut a hole for the power wires for the computer to go through. So let's do that. Just gonna mark where I want it, drill some pilot holes, cut it out with a jigsaw, and Bob's your aunt. Well, you'll have to lightly sand the edges and do a little bit of touch-up staining, but yeah. Now lastly, I'm just gonna go ahead and seal everything with some aerosol sealer I bought at, surprise, Home Depot. I'll leave a link or something for it down below, but I just really like the aerosol stuff because it's a lot harder for it to run or bubble up or drip, and it gets in all the little crevices, which is super nice. And with that, our TV stand is now finally complete. I hope this comes out the right way. I'm by no means trying to horn my own toot, but 
I'm quite pleased with how it came out. It's everything I envisioned and imagined it to be. I really like it. However, a lot of people do keep telling me it looks like a boat. But uh, I guess you gotta take the wins with the losses. Now, as I alluded to towards the beginning of the video, I have a lot more furniture to build. And in fact, I have two other pieces of furniture I have already built and filmed the videos for, and I'm currently in the process of editing those videos. And in my mind, they're even cooler pieces of furniture than this. No offense. So if that sounds interesting, please stay tuned. And even if it doesn't, please also stay tuned because I do have more mechanical, robotics, invention type videos in my mind that I'm working on forcing out. But I do have to build a new workbench before I can get back in the groove of building those type things. So give me a few videos if you would, please. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And if you didn't, please feel free to hit the thumbs down and send me a death threat. But regardless, thank you for watching, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to subscribe.